Yo, 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 this your boy Mark Goodman, aka the voice box of the block. I'm back with another one. You know, I'm hopping in the window like, bro, man, what's happening? I'm super excited to be here today, guys. Man, it's a wonderful, wonderful evening, man. I'm blessed. I am blessed. I'm thoroughly blessed. I can't thank you enough, man. Uh, I got a wonderful, wonderful man, a wonderful, wonderful person coming from my home state of South Carolina, Greenwood to be exact. Five men to be exactly exact. <laughs> this is my man, Travell Warden. What's happening? What's going on, man? What's going on, brother, man? How you doing? I am doing well, man. I'm I'm doing well. I'm I'm, I'm blessed. I've been ripping around and picking up kids from volleyball and <laughs> everything else. So, you know, it's yes, a great timing. I, I'm happy to be on the show. Listen, man, I'm a, I'm a track dad. I'm a track and field dad. So I understand okay. the picking and dropping <laughs> off. I understand. You know, yes. I mean, for those who don't know, but if you, I mean, if you like football, man, we start, you want to start from high school, you want to start from from college. I mean, he's, he, he stayed in the home. He represented the home state well, man. <laughs> he did. He really did, man. I've been very fortunate, man. I, I tell him, my, my buddies on the West Coast, they used to be jealous of me in the locker room. Like, man, you don't have to go for it. But I tell them, man, my ticket count is much higher than y'all. So <laughs> having family right here, my ticket count is way higher. But uh, yes. I've been very fortunate. High school, college, pro, even coaching, my first coaching career, you know, started off in college at yeah. University of South Carolina and then at Carolina Panthers. So I've been right at the house, yeah, you know, pretty I, much whole career. Yeah, and I don't want to get too 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 far ahead of my viewers. I don't want to get too ahead of. I want to start from the beginning, man. What you know? What what kind of got you inspired to play football? Was it at the beginning? Or what what kind of got you inspired? You know what? Who inspired me was my grandmother. My grandmother was a football wrestling. I I, I said if I wasn't playing football, I'd probably wrestling because my grandmother really enjoyed that, and she took us when our parents was working. My dad, my mom was working. She was taking grandkids and dropping them off at the park. So, and uh, I have older cousin, Anthony Wharton, who was a big time football player at Hillcrest. So when I was younger, it was Friday nights. All of us are loaded up. Now, I'm, me and my brother, we're, we're about one of the youngest out of our, my grandmother's kids. So we're all loaded up in the car and go and see my cousin play on Friday nights and emulate it on the side and everything else. So I, I knew when I got my opportunity, I wanted to play football first, so that was it for me. Yeah, yeah. So, so as you as you started, bro, because you, you played pop, you was in five men. Because those yeah. people don't know you play, you play all from little league all the way to you know all the way up. So, at what point, you know, not to rush, but what at point you said, okay, you know, I think I can, I can go to the NFL. With this. I can, I can go to the NFL. <laughs> You know, you know the crazy part about it? Like I said, my cousin Anthony, it seemed like if you was a Wharton and Fountain End, you played running back because he was a running back. And yeah. I wasn't big then growing up. You know, I had a growth spurt from eighth to ninth grade. That was my big jump. I, I grew like – I was 5'10", maybe in the eighth grade, and then I went to 6'2", 225 as a ninth grader. Wow. So I, I wow. grew – <laughs> I grew like I hit a growth spurt. My parents aren't. You did tall. it. You did it. You did it. You did an Anthony Davis jump. <laughs> yeah, it, it was crazy. My growth spurt. When I say it, I'm like, oh, that was true because that was the the actual physical that I had to take to play high school sports. You know, you got to right. take that physical. And it was like my aunt was the nurse, and she's like, oh, you grew. It, I was just <laughs> I, I grew my dad and everybody in my whole house over one summer. But uh, wow. you know, playing football started off eight years old at Fountain and Rick. It was just playing ball with my buddies, neighborhood guys, and guys you go to school with, you know, from being from Fountain Inn. And it was great. And then as I went on to high school, just having much success and making that transition from from running back to fullback to tight end and bumping inside and playing offensive line. So it was it was good for me. And then and then, you know, you 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 be able to get you how many okay, before I get to your signing day. How many people? How many colleges was 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 scouting you? You know what? It wasn't that many. Um, I was getting the looks, but no hard offer to the University of South Carolina made the first initial offer. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody. Was, I went to the Shrine Bowl, and that's when it picked up for me because, you know, went to the Shrine Bowl, going against all these all state guys and one on one on the boards, and I was getting those letters from all these universities. I, 
I racked up so many letters like throughout my high school year, but nobody made that firm offer to me. And when South Carolina, uh, you know, going to the Shrine Bowl and that those letters, you know, from that practices, they was coming up on. That's when you had all the coaches at your Shrine Bowl. And those letters was coming up under my door. They were sending me a message. It was like the biggest jump for me from high school uh, and just getting those letters. And then South Carolina was the first one to come to my house and they made a hard you know, offer. And when they made the offer, it was kind of like, man, that's where I'm going. That's where I wanted to go. So everybody else is still coming so, in, but nobody really made a hard offer but South Carolina and I committed to them right away. So did, 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 you, did you get Spurrier to come? You played on the Spurrier, right? I played Lou Holtz. Lou Holtz. Okay, okay, okay. So, so Lou Holtz, it was like the first week that they get hired. It was like the first – like the, they get hired the first week in December. And I want to say we played in the Shrine Bowl the second week right before Christmas, and that staff was there. And they still tell the story, like who was on their list and all that stuff, and they came to check us out. And so – uh, Coach Gooch, uh, Dave Guglielmo, he seen me then. And he still tell the story. Uh, he was my coach, for four, my O-line coach for four years. And I was coming off the basketball court, too. So I was in great shape. I wasn't as big. I was more slender right. and active playing basketball. So I was just like, man, I ain't left no weights. I just can't get pushed around by these guys. I'm going to be in better shape than them. But they, they like what they saw, um, you know, Georgia, Tennessee, all those schools were there. They were sending letters. But when South Carolina made the commitment, and I was going to South Carolina games in high school because they was, you know, sending the, you know, come down. And that like a, was, could, you, could you say, could you say that that decision was like a, a biased decision because you, you was already home, yeah. you was already yeah. going to the games, like uh, it's, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, it, it was South Carolina and Clemson um, in my mind. And then, you know, what really turned it, playing in the Shrine Bowl, I love the fact that you got to represent home, your home state. And when they were saying another South Carolina first down and we was running the ball, I was like, man, that kind of rang a bell. I would like for them to come and say <laughs> And, you know, being from – you know how it is. Being from – I'm from a small town found in and going to Columbia, you see those lights in a Saturday night game. It's like, yeah. man, that's – that you know and so i'm like man a part of that and what they had going on how they, they had high graduation rate for their players it was just kind of like i think the south carolina you know and playing for coach hopes really sold it for me yeah, yeah. how was I, coach, how was coach hopes you know what coach hopes was uh, a disciplinarian uh yeah. he was strict on us but you know as an 18 to 22 that's what you're looking for and my dad was the same way so it was like man that's all I knew you know do things the right way he held you accountable um going to class and being early you know being early for meetings if a meeting started at three o'clock you was there at 245 man wow you start at any time so 245 you was there but he was great you know for me and just helping young people you know grow he was he was he was on point for me Right, right. So, uh, as as you plan your career in in, in college, and and you know, we, we always got to talk about you know one of the probably the most you know memorable days of a of an athlete's life. They have to be drafted. They have to be sitting there, you know, you know, on draft day. How how would you feel it on, on on draft day when you say, okay, I'm finna get a, I'm finna get an agent. You know, I'm, I'm this guy from the kid from five men in South Carolina. You know what I mean? So how, how did it feel on draft day? It was exciting leading up to draft day. Uh, 2004, it was 2004, matter of fact. 2004, yeah, it, it was exciting. Uh, you don't know where you go. I would tell everybody that, that draft, don't listen to those message boards. They can have you as a top player or a bottom player. You just don't know what team really love you and it's going to roll it. I remember with my – my wife, my girlfriend, then we was outside. I was frustrated. I'm seeing guys go before me. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm going to go at this round and another round come. And then uh, I, I remember walking away. From, I had two cell phones. I thought I was, I thought I was big time. I had two cell phones. <laughs> I, like, I don't know which one they're going to call, but boom, I was mad. I was like, man, I should be going, you know. And I'm, I'm at my sister house the day of it, and uh, the two phones, and then my phone rang. And, my wife come and hand me the phone, like your phone ringing. And I don't know who's on the clock. I, I was walked away from the TV. I don't know who's on the clock. And it was a private number. So I didn't see the right. area, you know. And uh, it was on the other end. On the other end was John Fox, you know, John Carolina. Fox. <laughs> yeah. 
We're going to select you with the, with the 94th pick, and you know before it comes on TV. So you get that phone call, and I just remember everybody was going crazy, and I'm pointing at the TV because they don't know who's on the clock either. Nobody was paying attention after a while. So yeah. I point, and then they see the Carolina Panthers selection, and, and, man, the whole house just went crazy because yeah, – man, I know it. You know, being right here, playing my college ball in South Carolina and getting drafted to the Panthers, and they just came off the Super Bowl loss to the Patriots. So Yeah. No talk about That's I, Listen, I still, I still, you know, have an issue with Jay, John Casey kicking the ball out of bounds. Oh, we ain't talking about that. That's a whole nother story. And then, you know, I asked Stephen Davis, did you think the Spygate got us? He said he definitely did. So we ain't gonna yeah. talk about it. That's a whole different story. Because I got I got I got a question to ask you in your playoff journey. Before we get to that, your first couple of years, uh, how was it your first couple of years getting acclimated to the NFL? Because that's a big jump. I mean, uh, you know, even though you still at home, you know, coming from Fountain, now you in the NFL. Uh, you 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 moving around. You you're trying to you trying to stay make the, make the team. You you doing everything the coaches ask. How was it? You know what? It was exactly that. Doing everything, being early, taking the, the lessons that I learned in college, and all right, I'm gonna be on time. I'm gonna do this that. And you know, my first five games, I was in street clothes, man. I was in active. Yeah. I'm, yeah. My first five games, I didn't even dress. And I remember uh, uh, our owner, Mark Richardson, saying to me, hey, your time coming, you know, because he can see the frustration. I'm like, man, I, I'm seeing everybody else in my draft class. They they at least dressing and playing special teams. I'm like, man, yeah. come on. I need one of these jerseys. I never sat out. And we had an injury go on. And I remember, uh -huh. you know, that week, the old line coach saying, all right, it's between you two guys who are going to get the starting job. And I never practiced so hard in my life. I was, I was like, man, I don't know if I'm going to even make it to Sunday. I was banging out there like it was game day just to get yeah. that start. And I got that start, man. But the guys embraced me. You got to see what you've seen on TV, uh, Fiery, Jake DeLone, Steve, uh, Steve Smith, Stephen Davis, man. It was at all because I just watched these guys playing the Super Bowl, and now I'm in the huddle with these guys. And, That's crazy. And how they practice, they was true pros, how they practice and carried themselves. So it was – I had to do it. You know, you yeah. had to step up. And, and, and that's the thing. Down. And that's the thing. Why I'm glad you hit, talked about that because – you know, I, I go, I used, you know, it's like a tradition to go to the training camp at Walker. I don't know what's so much going on now. They might, they, they kept it this year, but I don't know what's going on the following years because they got a wonderful facility, I think, in uh, Shelby somewhere, but they, because they moved it. But uh, uh, how hard they, the training camp was, you know, because like Steve Smith and a bunch of them guys, they practice like game day. So, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I can, I can remember Steve Smith spinning the ball, smacking the head, oh. and doing all kind of crazy things. Like, I'm like, bro, these are your teammates. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, it, that's what kind of intense it was. Steve Davis running hard. You know what I mean? So, I can understand where you're coming from. It, it was tough, man. But it wasn't long periods. It was like an hour and a half, maybe two hours of bam, bam, bam. But you got to think, I came in as a – as a rookie, and there was the best defensive line in the NFL. You had a young Julius Peppers, Mike Rucker, Chris Jenkins, uh, Branson Buckner. Then you had Ooh. Al Wallace. You had those guys coming. So it was like, all right, Rook, go in there and battle. And, you know, it was like – but, you know, the thing that helped you, it prepared you because you go against those guys and they ain't going to take it easy on you. You had to earn their respect, so you couldn't yeah. back – but you go after them, and after a while, the D-line, like, you know, you know, they know what you're about. So when you earn – their respect and the guys around you, it was like, hey, man, you you need to be playing. You know, that was the biggest thing for me. When those guys was coming to me, like, you need to be playing, you know, right, and saying right, that right, to me. Right. Was, man, I, I, I got to keep busting it because my teammates believe it. But it was tough, man, but it was fun because it was game like Every day was game like You know, you went out there and you practiced hard and you competed. So it was yeah. like the drilling of a game, but it was magnitude once you got to game day because it was really a game. But you know, the way we went out there and competed, you didn't take nothing from them. You didn't back down. And they didn't back down for you. It's everything that you would want as a competitor. That's how my rookie year was. And it was super fun because it was like, this is what the NFL is all about, a good team. And we got barred with a lot of injuries that year. Yeah, the following yeah. year, to the yeah. NFC Championship. But that year, yeah. it was big to go back again, man, because yeah. everybody was rolling. I think Steve broke his leg the first Monday night game that year. Yeah, so I remember like, that. Wow. Man. You know, but – those guys really prepared me because going in that training camp, it was like, man, I got to earn these guys respect. I ain't backing down from them. 
Let's go. <laughs> yeah, and that's and that's how I felt. That's how I felt it was. It, it was a tough uh, uh, year. With the following year, man, you, you you had a you had a great run. Talk about the, your experience in the playoffs. It was it was great. You know, it, it was one of those deals. We had we was road warriors. That was our thing. We had to go on the road and play a good New York team, a yeah. good Chicago team, and then yeah. we had to go to the NFC Championship. I, I, we was beat up a little bit. We lost all our running backs in you know, like every week in the playoffs yeah. when we went out to Seattle. Man, and, but I, it was just – I can remember after that Chicago game, I think, and the, and the weather was cold. And I used, uh, to look on, I used to look on the injury report. Half the team was sick. <laughs> I mean, uh, like, you know, we, just, we won that – y'all won that game, but it, it, y'all took a beat. Y'all took a beat. Uh, I think Deshaun broke his ankle that game. The field was bad. It was Chicago. It was cold. You know, it was it was all those things that you hear about Chicago in late January. That's how that game was. It just didn't snow. It was just super cold and windy. We won. It was a physical game. Them whole playoffs was physical. Going to New York, you know, beating them. It was physical with Strahan and, and O.C., you mean, it was like, man, it was a physical game. And then going to limping into Seattle, you know, we limped into Seattle. It was yeah. like, man, we, if we just had a little bit more, guy, you know, a few more guys, it would have been, a, I hope it would have been a different story, but we limped in there and they got the best of them. Yeah. And I want to talk about 2018. We went, we went, we went all our home games. I mean, 2008, I'm sorry, not 18, 2008. 2008, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is one of the most, you know, memorable playoff games, you know, I can remember that hurt my feelings the most because we went, we went all our home games. I mean, we 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 12 and 4. We 12 and 4. We 12 and 4. We 12 and 12, ball. We play our zone in the regular season. It was a tough game. I know it was. Kurt won. It was amazing. We get in the playoffs. He come down us and what happened? What happened? You know what? That first drive, we ran the ball and threw the ball right down their throat. And I was like, yeah. oh, they, don't stay, they don't stand a chance. We finna run them up out of here. And it's one of those deals, like in playoff ball, whoever plays the best that day, no matter what the record is, is going to win. We made too many mistakes across the board, you know, of getting pressure, sacks, interceptions, fumbles. It was like, we couldn't stop it. You know, yeah. that momentum swung against us and we could, you know, drive and, and something bad would happen. It was like, it was, it was one of those deals that, man, you brought it up, man. I've been trying to block that out for the last. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because, you know, you know the, the thing about that was because we were so dominant at home. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's that, that, that number that, two seed, number, number two seed. seed. You know, and can't, those they, guys just got blew out by somebody. I want to say the New York, or somebody in the playoffs, you know, in December, but they got on a roll. I, honestly, I, got I thought, on a roll. honestly, I honestly, I love that year because I felt like that was your best year. I can remember my Green Bay the, the last couple of games, the Green Bay game. <laughs> <laughs> the Green Bay game. I mean, there was some highlights of you pulling, man. I'm telling you, man, that's that's how this was great was giving me cheers because I remember, you know what I'm saying, some of your most memorable moments, man. And how was it? Playing with Jake Delon in those moments again, I know no because everybody used to say he wasn't a great practice person, but game day he was ready. Is that oh, kind of yeah. the closest thing we can kind of compare like that? Yeah, because Jake he he had a lot. We asked our quarterbacks to do a lot, and Jake did a lot. He was a great leader. You never like he was fiery, and he never threw you under the bus. Like you know. Somebody asked him about what happened. Oh, man, I got to do this better. Or I got to do this. He never – so, you you know, as a young player, you just respect that. Like, man, he had a chance to throw me under the bus or throw anybody under the bus. He never – he always took the heat. And then he get in the game, He you always believed that he was going to make the right play, you know, whether he was hitting a Ricky Pro across the middle or Steve Smith or Musi and Muhammad or – checking us out of a, a protection and calling it over here because he been film studying and know where the blitz going. You'd be like, oh, man. Yeah. He was just one of those guys. He was fiery. When we scored a touchdown, you knew yeah, he it. Was. He was. Uh, he was. He, he was. You know, you, you get into some He had the prettiest deep battle. ball as well. He had one yeah. of the prettiest deep balls, man. And he, he can drill and he'll he throw it. And he'll, I'm like, Jake, man. He he was he's still a great dude and he he provided great leadership for us. And I, you know, that's probably one of the fun times of my career, just playing with these guys and 
you look across the board with your super friends today because you, you've been in so many battles, you know, and yeah. you know how fiery they get. I'm like, man, Jake, you can tell when he get fired, man, that Louisiana accent come out, you know. It's like, man, I played with a lot of Charleston guys. And, nah, nah. And, but, no, nah, it's not like that Louisiana deep deep accent when they get out and he's fiery. Now, now I do I do want to talk about something. It's, okay, that's a, that's an 08. And something mm-hmm. amazing happened in 08. You get you get the six year extension. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, guy from five then, kid five, then you get the bills <laughs> after the phone calls to Texas. I mean, you're a different person now. How do you, you know, cause this is the other side of I think football, and I'm glad I talked to you about it. How do you handle that? How do you handle that amount of money, kid from five then, your hometown, so people probably can get close to you. More than they usually would if you was you was you was bothering somewhere else. So how do you have that other side of that? You you know what you you don't really change. You grow over time. Um, that's something that you want. You know, you thinking about it. You more thinking at the time. You think, okay, let's put this behind me. Where I'm gonna live at? You know, because you sign extensions. And I'll tell these guys now, man. Our extension was way longer <laughs> than you guys signed a three year deal, and it tops everything. Now you right. know the money's different, but. I was very fortunate and blessed that the team that drafted me wanted me and they proved it by assigning me to a long-term deal. And my family was able to, you know, be a part of it, you know, for, for 10 years, yeah. I was able to stay in one spot, the nine, exactly. you know, in Cincinnati, but you know, you start thinking about long-term in that building ownership, thinking that much of you to say, okay, you, you're a tackle and you go inside and play guard. You can go outside and play tackle. So they had that much faith, faith in me. And just to give it as a person, they had much faith in me. But, you know, to be able to hound it, man, I, I my foundation was was always strong with, you know, my parents. But, you know, I, I didn't do much, man. I, I had my family, my wife and my kids. So, you know, that that's my that's my entourage. You know, yeah. that's that's what I that's who I hang with. I got some <laughs> and, and family, but I don't hang with a big crew, man. My, yeah, I, I, you know, my 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 crew get out of school at two thirty, three o'clock, four o'clock. So yeah, you know, everything was kind of you know making sure they was okay. You know, making sure my mom was okay. Making sure you know immediate family was okay. But it's nothing crazy though. You know, you put it away, you save it, you listen to people that made mistakes and you learn from them. You listen to people that's been there. And I've been very fortunate because the people around me has always been helpful. You know, it haven't been, Hey man, I need to, it's been people around me that's been helping me grow as a person and newfound. Okay. I'm in this realm of where I need to be. Okay. How to grow, how to get better. And so I've been very fortunate to have very blessed to have good people around me where I didn't have to worry about so much other stuff. You know, my fi- my family foundation of coming home to my wife and my, my kids and, you know, having my friends around me. So, you know, you start thinking about that and just try to make the best decisions. You know, keep it simple. I'll tell anybody, keep it simple, man. Don't try to do too much. Keep it simple till you figure it out. And when it's time for you to figure out, you'll be in a position to make moves. But you know, just keep everything simple. Don't get overwhelmed because it can be overwhelming because you, you're getting so much and this happening. But just keep it simple and you'll figure out you're not supposed to know everything. Everything in life is learned. So with that, you know, just try to just move forward. Now, now speaking of, you said a wonderful thing about having good people around you. And uh, association always brings similarities as my as my dad would always so tell me. And every time I watch an interview of Jordan Gross, he speaks highly of you, so that's one of my that's one of my good favorite players uh, in the Carolina Panther history. So, talk about your relationship with uh, Jordan Gross, man. You know what? It was it was funny because you know we we're so different. He's from Idaho. I'm from Fountain, South Carolina. He's from, <laughs> from Idaho, I'm from, and we became close friends, man. We was carpooling buddies. We stayed in the same neighborhood. Uh, we ride to work together every day. Either I was driving. Or he was driving every day. We carpool. We get there early to watch film. Now they got iPads and they can take all this stuff home. But back then, you had to go in the building and watch film. We get there early. We work out together. And then we played together for so long right beside each other. So it was a trust factor. You know, you know, the craziest thing about that is we have our oldest kids are born on the same day. It wasn't playing. Our oldest kids are born on the same day. And we was playing an NFC championship game in Seattle. And we was worried about like, man, we catch this flight. We're going to miss 
These kids <laughs> were going to prove they have to get back from the NFC Championship game. But he's been a close friend even today. Uh, he's been, you know, a straightforward dude, man. It was, it was, it's funny because you don't know. It's like, man, this guy from the Pacific Northwest, you know, <laughs> what I'm saying? I'm from down south. And even today, he can't come to my youth football camps. I used to come to his camps. Yeah, you had some amazing camps. You had some amazing camps. Our never, kids grew up together. So it yeah. was like, man, it, it was my neighbor, you know, in Charlotte. And we just, we develop a bond of, hey, man, let's go out here and play ball. And, you know, for a long period of time, we played right beside. We we yeah. kind of just gave nods. We didn't make calls. We're like, yeah, you see it? Yeah, I see it. Let's go. And so having each other back, he's been a great friend of mine. Yeah, so so we're moving on. Chap, chap, I like to say chapter two of your of your, of your career because you, know, you really jumped into coaching, man. You <laughs> coaching uh, the game, the game Cox, uh, assistant offensive line. And then you did a stint with the Carolina Panthers, and now congratulations! You with the Washington Commanders. You're yeah. back from Vera. I mean, uh, uh, no, you didn't take no time off, did you, bro? You know what? I, I took a year <laughs> off after I retired, and me and Gross did a. He had a podcast. Well, before it became True Podcast and stuff like that, but we had a TV show with the Panthers, like their little local TV show. Yeah. Well, we were just joking. It was kind of like. Our little deal, we got the right skits. And so I did TV and uh, and did the, the post-game show for the Panthers right after I retired. So I had those things. And then the opportunity to come, University of South Carolina was starting their quality control positions. And during the lockout, I was able to go down to the University of South Carolina. I didn't know if I wanted to do coaching or administration. I knew I wanted to be somewhere around ball. Yeah. And while people were still there and it's like I was still playing, it was a good idea to do it and. Coach Spurrier and I interviewed to do a quality control. I left the TV with Gross, which he was mad at me for a little bit, but he understood it. It was an opportunity to, you know, just to try it. I did that for that year in 15, and I liked it. You know, college was different because the landscape had changed. You know, when I was in college, there wasn't no social media, man. There wasn't no phones like that. We're just now getting phones, really. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that changed. And then the opportunity to do an internship, the Bill Walsh Minority Fellowship with the with the Panthers. And, you know, talking to my wife and we right there in Charlotte, it's like, well, the same coaching staff that you played for is there. So what better opportunity to take advantage of Absolutely. going do it right here in Charlotte? This ownership, everybody know you. You doing you did TV. So just cross over and see if you want to do that. And that led to one thing, another opportunities open up. Uh, they put me to work, man. They, they put me to work. They really wanted to see if I wanted to coach. They, I was drawing cards and <laughs> doing all kinds of stuff. But it was it was exciting. It was challenging yeah. because, you know, yeah. as a lineman, you kind of get stuck in your own little box. But you had to know why we did certain things. And I love the fact that we were scheming and game planning and that right there uh, was did it. And so for the last going on six years of coaching, I never would have thought I'd be coaching. Uh, professional ball, nevertheless, big time D1 ball. I was coaching my daughter's middle school girls basketball. And I, you know, I enjoyed coaching that, but I had to take a break when the opportunity came to coach in the NFL. And even now, just being able to pass that knowledge to young players has been, you know, when my young, when my young guys get out there and play, yeah. I'm excited. I'm proud of them because they spent so much time with me and I'm teaching them little things and they got to go out there and just, put them to you. So it's been exciting. Tonight, you have the Ron Vera in D.C. Yes. How you feel? Like, like what's some, what some of your expectations when you going into the building? I know uh, they're trying to get back, get back. So what are some of your, your expectations? Uh, uh, keep build, I think the biggest thing, we got to keep building. Um, keep building trust. You know, that's the biggest thing as a coach. The guys got to trust you. They have to believe in what you're teaching. You know, everybody can play football. You wouldn't be at this level if you couldn't play football. So you had to pass that test. Now is putting the techniques of what, why we're doing certain things and kind of letting them know and then building it so they can have success. And that's what our job is to make sure it's teaching. You know, we always say, you know, coaching is teaching and being able to articulate what you expect out of them and, you know, and make it realistic. If a guy can't do a certain thing, don't force it. You got to find somebody who can do it. You got to do that in the NFL because 
as you can see, man, it's going to be a Super Bowl every year. It's going to be a draft every year. You're yes. going to have free agents. <laughs> you're going to have those process. But, you know, the biggest challenge for me right now is battling this cold, man. I'm from down south, man. So yeah, I got a battle of uh, being froze up here. We yeah. get some 20s. But, you know, outside of that, man, it's been a joy. Uh, I appreciate Coach Rivera just having, the, you know, the faith in me to believe that and give me an opportunity to come and do this, you know, first in Carolina and then getting a phone call to come to to Washington and be a part of this organization with them. So for my my thing is to come there early, outwork everybody, <laughs> be prepared, the same mindset that I took as a player. But, man, I, I love being a part of this team. I think that's the biggest thing about coaching and playing is the camaraderie and being a part of a team. And that's what you miss when you don't play is that team atmosphere. And that's what we're building here, that team, that trust, and uh, just going out there and putting together a winning team with the right mentality so we can win some good football game. Mm, that's what's up. Now, I wanted to ask you because uh, this, this this is a question I was asking when we come to retired players. Uh, that transition from from playing to coach, from coaching, was that – did that help you? Because uh, a lot of times, you know, people get in this – I guess players get in this space where when they retire, they don't have nothing to do, they get bored. From a mental aspect, was it? did that help you? Keep moving yes. forward. Yes, it, it did because you're so used to a schedule. Your yeah. body used to it. You know how it is. When it's football season, you know it's football season. You can smell <laughs> it in the grass. You can smell it in your body. It's the end of the summer. Everything's get prepared for it. When it's the off season, you you know when to unwind, relax, yeah. and enjoy. Yeah. And you know, and coaching. And that was it for me, just going through the seasons and just it gave me it gave me a great transition because, like I said, I did the TV stuff and that was cool. And I enjoyed it. I learned a lot. But, man, it was something about having that full loaded schedule. I was used <laughs> to a full schedule coming from college to the NFL, just that full schedule. Like you have a little break in there. But, man, I don't need too many breaks. It's kind of <laughs> time to get let me get my schedule going because that's going to enhance my routine. And then now as a coach, you know, in the off season, I get to spend time with my family more because during the season, you're kind of locked in there. You know, yeah. you got a little, little time here and there, but off season, I want to take advantage of just spending that time with the family, getting in there, getting your work done, being prepared, correcting the season mistakes and you're ready for free agent, the draft and all that stuff. And when you get time to get out, get out and spend that time with your family. But that would kind of gave me great balance. Mm. Now, now for my younger viewers, man, well, I, I ain't going to hold you too long. For my younger viewers, I always try to give informative information, man. This is what this podcast is about, man. The best podcast in the state of South Carolina, man. And I always try to leave my uh, viewers with informative information. For the younger viewers, man, what are some of the tips you may give them uh, if they have the uh, dream to make it to the NFL? What is like, maybe give them three, three tips that you got off the top that you can give them to inspire to kind of keep give them an idea of what they need to do to get into the head, at least in that direction. Always believe in yourself. Always believe in yourself. No matter what situation, no matter what obstacles, no matter what's in your way, always believe that you going momentum always coming your way. No matter what you're dealing with. Lou Holtz used to always say, momentum's always coming your way. No matter what you're dealing with, if you want it, what, how do I get there? Well, I got to do the right thing, right? If everybody around me doing something wrong and I know it's not going to help me get to my goal, I got to do what's right. And sometimes that's lonely. That's going to the library study if you're behind in your in your books. That's cutting friends out, not going to parties. You know what you need to do, and you won't regret it. You know what you need to do. And being disciplined, being on time, waking up, doing all those little things. I would tell kids, do all those little things. And everything in life is learned. Nobody just jump up and born and have all the answers. Everything. You're going to have to go through something to get through it. Now, just learn from it. You know, learn from it. And Learn from people's mistakes. Lou Holtz used to always tell us, and I know I'm quoting Lou Holtz a lot right now. It's like <laughs> nobody ever stood up and said they're successful for all the bad things they've done, mm. right? Nobody ever said, man, I'm, I'm here because I was a, on drugs or substance abuse. I did this and I did all the bad. They wouldn't, they never told you that. They always told you, don't do it, right? People right. come to your school. And I was told, so don't get involved in that. Don't be that person. So you got to steer away from all the things that can cripple you from being the best that you can be mm -hmm. and compete. 
I tell guy, I tell kids all the time, compete in the classroom as you would on the basketball court, the fields and all that. Compete. Compete. You're smart enough. You can do it. Compete. Don't sell yourself short. Compete. And everything you do, compete. And no, you never get tired of the basics. I know I'm, I'm going on with it. But like, <laughs> you're good. Man, you're good. Man, I love it. You never, I never love get tired of all that never. work on hey, the I, basics. You don't, you don't get to talk to a 10-year veteran every day. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, but, uh, just, just go out there, believe in yourself, work hard. Uh, There's no shortcuts. And be ready to take the long run. It will be worth it at the end. You know, no matter if the NFL happened, no matter what happened, it will prepare you to own your own business, it prepare you to be a dad, mom, whatever you're trying to do. Good. But just keep working. Don't give up. Now, now one more thing. Who is the best all-time, all-time greatest Carolina Panther in your opinion? Ooh. And I, I'm gonna tell you so. I heard, rest in peace. He went. He got inducted to the Hall of Fame. Sam Mills. Steve Smith said Sam Mills. My personally, I said Steve Smith. Now, who would you say all time great? You know, because you you was out there in a lot of battles. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna say Sam Mills because of. When I first got there, he was one of the first person to welcome me to the family. Uh, he was a coach. Wow. He was a coach. And being from Carolina, you know, we watching Panthers all the time. Yeah. And I'm watching all the plays up. In, you know, he's making plays left and right. And to, <laughs> for him and his statue then, and he jawed the way he, you know, looking back, the way he, he, he commanded the room when he spoke, everybody stopped what they was doing. Wow. Everybody did this. I'm talking about throughout the building. And just that professionalism that he had of, man, I'm just a, a a young kid from South Carolina, man. He ain't got to speak to me. That's Sam Mills, right? But yeah, yeah. Of, of his statue to to notice us. And, and my little rookie class, we used to always talk about, like, man, Sam just came and ate lunch with us. He just pulled at our table and ate lunch with us. You know, wow. it's, it's yeah. myself, Chris Gamble, Kerry Colbert. We, we just yeah. now trying to crash wow. the surface. Yeah. And he'll come and eat lunch with us at, you know, we just making it and he'll just come and talk to us and give us advice. So, you know, when you think about great, he made those plays, but he also made you feel like you was a part of something special. So I would say the great Sam Mills, man, he was awesome. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is, man. Thank you. Thank you for blessing me with your time. Uh, you really, really, really don't know how much I appreciate it, man. The great man, it's awesome. the one South Carolina Greenwood. Hall of Famer, you know you got all these accolades, man. I ain't got to keep saying it. Thank you so much. And I didn't know who was, who was family. <laughs> I know, man. Small world, man. Small world. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's your boy, Mark Goodman, a.k.a. The Voice Box of the Block. We out. Thanks, bro. Thanks for having me on, Mark. No matter the topic, whatever it is, then you know that we got you. We spread all the knowledge. We talk about politics, even the gossip. You can hear us on Spotify or tune in to YouTube. You even can watch us. I know we got haters. I can promise you one thing that we never stop it. It's the Good Guy Podcast. I ain't bragging, but we are the greatest. It's the Good Guy Podcast.